Now, uh, friends that may be joining us online, we're glad that you're joining us. We are invited to come worship with us anytime that you'd like to. We're here on Sunday mornings at 11 and uh, 5.30 on Saturday nights. And we would invite you to be a part of our church in person, but we're glad you're with us today online. The first thing we're doing today at Hope is something we've been doing for a little while. is some United Methodist trivia. So uh, uh, we're ready. If y'all are ready, we're ready for the first question. <coughs> According to the Bible, how many magi or wise men visited the baby Jesus? Three. 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 All right. How many do we have? Now hold up your fingers if, if you tell me how many you think it is. Okay, wrong answer. <laughs> what? Now let's have the answer, John. It's a trick question. The Bible never gives a number. <laughs> there are three gifts, but it never gives a number. See, I got you on one. How about that? Go, go, all. Can y'all say all? Uh, okay, next question. Joshua and the Israelites crossed the Jordan River and conquered this city, and the walls came tumbling down. Jericho. Oh, we got a resounding answer. Jericho. See, it, the people online can hear how well you know these things. It's good. Now, this is not this is not a uh, Bible question. This is a reason question. What has eyes but cannot see, a tongue and cannot speak, and a soul but cannot be saved? Shoes. Man, y'all are good. <laughs> Here I thought I would catch you on that one. <laughs> All right. What word means God in three persons? Trinity. Trinity. Yeah. Oh, I'm hearing a lot. Of, the right hand side is getting a lot of answers. <laughs> so you think the answer is Trinity? Yep. Yeah. Okay, let's see if that's right. Yep. My hearing aids keep coming back on, and it really makes it out. Okay, next question. Christians who follow the teachings of Martin Luther are called what? Lutherans. Who did that? Who said that? Lutheran. It was behind you, Sylvia. But did, Deborah, did you say that? No, it was, it, well, Lutheran is the right answer. Now, King Saul's son, Jonathan, was close friends with what future king of Israel? David. David. Oh boy, I, I gotta get harder questions. Yeah. Harry, there, no one to him. All right, keep going. What three gifts did the Magi or wise men bring to Jesus? <laughs> What's the first one? Gold. Myrrh. Gold, right? Gold, Gold. first. Gold. And then what's next? Frankincense. And, and what's the last one? Was myrrh, right? What was what was frankincense good for? No idea. Smell. It's, sense, it's incense, basically. What was myrrh good for? No idea. Anointing dead bodies. All right, next question. There's symbolicness in that, why they bring that to Jesus. The kings of Egypt in the Old Testament were known by what name? Pharaoh. 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 <laughs> Yeah, my hearing aids keep coming. Y'all are really loud when they're working. I'll tell you. In fact, I'm really loud when they're working. Okay, Jesus said that He is the vine and we are the I hear you, AJ. I'm just trying to hear it out front. Branches. There we go. I either got easier questions or we're getting smarter. Oh. Maybe we should call this, are you smarter than the preacher? Instead of smarter than the second grader. Name one of John Baptist's parents. No. No, Mary. No. Elizabeth. Elizabeth is one. Let's go ahead and name the other one. Mr. Elizabeth. <laughs> no. Zachariah. Zachariah. Okay, next question. Revelation is the final book of the Bible. What's the next to last book? Who said it? Faith. What is it, say Faith? John 3. No. It's in the Old Testament. Last book of the Old Testament. I mean, excuse me, no, it's in the New Testament. But anyway, it's Jude is the answer. 
It's a trick question because nobody knows what the last book is. Go, go ahead and show it, John. Jude. Jude. Hey, yeah, it's not the same. Hey, Jude. <laughs> the, word, the word from the Greek word for witness refers to someone who is persecuted and killed for his or her faith. I got it back from AJ's got it, but I don't think y'all could hear it. Martyr. Okay, martyr. All right. AJ's giving away all answers. She's going to have to wait in the future. Okay. I think that's the last one. So, friends, it is good to be with you. This is the third Sunday of Advent, and we are now going to light the Advent wreath. We have an Advent leaf wreath lighter here today. Uh, her name is Evelyn Massey, and so she's going to just go ahead, Evelyn, come over here, and I'll help you. Make sure you get in position. Besides that, I always like to escort you. And I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is get this one lit for you. Maybe. Okay, and then I'm going to turn this one so you can get it easier. And just wait until we're ready. So we light this candle as a symbol of Christ our joy. May the joyful promise of your presence, O God, make us rejoice in our hope of salvation. Light him up, Evelyn. And let's all sing together the, this one verse. Oh, oh come, oh come, great Lord. stand as we sing our first hymn today as you are alone or holy this is we haven't done this for a little while so i'm going to ask ann to play it through it's not very long so if ann would play it through for us one time so you can kind of hear the, the way that it sounds
Excellent. You guys did good. You may be seated. Oh my God. <laughs> Thank you so much for singing. <coughs> it makes AJ and I feel good when we hear noise from out there, doesn't it, AJ? Amen. Today, our first scripture comes from the, God, the uh, letter, Lady James's letter. It's in the fifth chapter, the seventh verse. Be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth. Be patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also must be patient. Strengthen your hearts for the coming of the Lord is near. Beloved, do not grumble against one another so that you may not be judged. See the judge is standing at the doors. As an example of suffering and patience, beloved, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks. Thanks. God. Friends, as you're able, would you stand as this morning we affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead, He ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father and the Lord. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of God, and life everlasting. Amen. As we prepare to pray together this morning, we'll be singing Infant Holy, Infant Lowly. If you're moved to come forward and pray at the prayer rest here, feel free to do so. You know, I always have a plan, and then my plans sometimes don't work out. Um, before we pray, this week we received a thank you note uh, from our blessing box, and uh, it's very hard to read. And it was, it, it was. So anyway, I have it here on my phone, and I can hopefully make it bigger so that I can read it. Uh, yeah, here we go. I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I think that blessing box is a, is a wasted effort. I feel that way some days. I come and I see people junking stuff out in the parking lot and leaving food, and I get disgruntled. Well, I'm human. And then I read this, and I think, well, maybe I'm wrong, and maybe God's right. <laughs> Imagine that, right? So here's what we got. Thank you all for the blessing box. 
It's such a great and wonderful idea. I wish more folks saw it that way. Allowing people to grab what they need without a thousand questions. But most importantly, allows people to retrieve food when they're able to get here as opposed to jumping through hoops only to make it to a food pantry right as they're closing. Anyhow, I just really wanted to thank the people of this church and the church as a whole for such a huge blessing. Day after day. The impact y'all have made on our community really is huge. People speak highly of this church and the Blessing Box. Our community is struggling right now. But trust me, they are very grateful. Oh, and thanks for not passing judgment. And please keep doing what you're doing. Amen. And then she has a PS. More of our community is homeless on the streets these days. I just thought you wanted to know that. Let us pray. Gracious God, you know that we really do have good intentions. We don't set out to do any harm. And we are happy to do good. But sometimes our failure to do good does harm. Today, as we think about the coming of Christ, think about Advent, think about the needs of our community and the world for Jesus Christ. Maybe we can find ways to be less judgmental. Maybe we can put less restrictions around the way we're helpful. Maybe we can do better. So often, God, we come to you with a list of things we want when we pray. Kind of like your Santa Claus. But everything we have is a gift from you. Every opportunity we have out there to help is given to us by you. So God, forgive us when we walk away, when we're not faithful, when we don't follow through on the commitments and the promises we made. And remind us what a joy it is to serve our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray for this young lady named Jennifer and so many others. And if we get real honest, God, only by the grace of God are we not in her same place. So thank you for your provenient grace. And now we ask you to help sanctify us as we do the work of this church, the work of the kingdom. And follow our Lord and Savior Jesus, praying like he taught us when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. At this time, I'd like to invite the ushers to come forward for the collection of our gifts, tithes, and offerings.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we've been given so much. Today, accept what we have to give you. Our gifts, our tithes, our offerings, God, and use them to multiply your kingdom, to allow, allow us to better glorify you in this community throughout the world. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us stand. Okay, it's okay to clap. It is absolutely okay. We always give God the praise. Praise God from the moon.
you may stand for the reading of the gospel. It's in this morning, it's in the 11th chapter of Matthew, beginning with verse 2. When John heard in prison that the Messiah, what he was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who's come, who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal places. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet, this is the one about whom it is written. See, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist, and yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. God. And you may be seated. So the message today is entitled, What Are You Looking For? This is, a, to me, a, a pretty point. You know, it follows, remember it follows what happened for some of us at least last week when the people were going down to the river to get baptized and they were going to have their sins removed. That's what they wanted. And John looks up and the Pharisees and the Sadducees are there. They're down at the river too because everybody else is going. And he looks at them and says, what are you doing here? They didn't need to have their sins removed according to them. And he follows up with this story about all the people going down there. What were they going down to see? Were they going down to look at pretty scenery? Not so much. And when they refer to people in soft robes, you know, I, I feel a little guilty. But I'm not royal and I'm not in a royal place. You see, there was a tendency to give extra homage to people that had more money. It's a good thing we don't have that anymore, right? I mean, we don't have any of that going on in the world now where people look up to people because they've got a better car, a nicer house, more money in the bank, better retirement plan. Oh, we do still? Some things never change, do they? And so you read through that and Jesus is pretty confronted, I think, you know, for Jesus, he doesn't do this real often. I mean, you can kind of hear him saying that, Ken. What did you go down there to see? And he ends up, did you go see a prophet? Well, yeah, that's why they went. And they wanted to see a prophet. They wanted to see him. Did they want to believe what he said after they saw him? I don't think so, so much. But you got to get to the last sentence. John the Baptist is the greatest. He's the one that led the way. He's the one that marks the path. He's the God, according to Jesus. Yet the least person in the kingdom is greater than he. That young lady wrote that letter, Jim. She's greater than he. The people that are hurting. So now, here we are, a couple of weeks from Christmas. For us, the Jews and the Muslims, 
have all taken a religious holiday and we celebrate pagan things like Christmas trees and gift giving. What does it mean for us to change our eyesight and our vision so that we, and if I want to go back to the James passage, his main thrust is don't judge. Now look, I, I'm preaching to myself about this too. I'm a judgmental person at times. <laughs> I got a little disturbed yesterday. I made the comment before church last night that I was a sinner and one of my friends said, you sure are. <laughs> But we could all have that said to us, couldn't we? Amen. So, there's another phrase here that, that really is disturbing if you're thinking about the world in a judgmental way. What Jesus says here, and blessed, is, or, or what Matthew says about Jesus, is blessed is anyone who takes no offense in Jesus. That's a whole different than belief, isn't it? So one of the struggles we have, and this is not new to anybody, this has been going on for a long time, the church, the church of Jesus Christ, I'm not talking about the Latter-day Saints, I'm talking about the Baptists, the Methodists, the Catholics, the Lutherans, everybody, has been in decline for probably since the 50s. And my sense about it is because we decided to set a paradigm or, or a set of rules that said, if you don't follow these rules, you're not one of us. And I think back, you know, when I was a teenager and I lived right over here where I live right now, and I was going to Sam Rayburn High School, and uh, I was having this discussion earlier, I was really shy. <laughs> really. And so, you know, I'm short, you know, I mean, I've all, that's not new. And, you know, we'd be going around the halls of the school, and you're looking at all the girls down there, and then you got, when you're short, you got two things. First of all, they have to be good looking, and they have to be shorter than you are. <laughs> well, short people know what I'm talking about. Yep. <laughs> the rest of you have no idea. And I go, and, and then there were these other qualifiers, you know. Uh, but really, the ones that were important was, I wonder where she had her faith upbringing. I wonder what her family's like. I wonder if she if she has parents that have been married or if they're divorced. I wonder if their home has violence in it. Uh, we didn't ask those questions. We were interested in only the physical stuff. And that's why there's a whole ton of people in my generation that are divorced at least once. We pick and we choose, and, and I'm picking out that silly way of, of showing judgment, but we make judgments in all kinds of ways. And probably in reality, friends, Jennifer was sometime or the other at that box out there, and I had some thought about there's another person out there taking stuff out of the box, and I have to confess, I'm on my knees begging for forgiveness for that, friends, because I have been judgmental about that, and probably for much of my life, I've been judgmental about people that are poor. How about you? So to me, Advent, <laughs> It's not this, oh, wow, we've got, four, you know, we got four weeks till Christmas and we get to open a present. It's, wow, well, I've got four weeks to figure out what i got wrong in my life that I need Jesus Christ to fix. Got anything? Not that I don't want to show a hand. You don't need to make a list. You know. <laughs> but when I start to think about this, when I start to think about just my process. You know, you all got a process too, right? You get up in the morning, yeah, you're going to church. Maybe. At least y'all did. And so you come to church, and, and what are you looking for? Pretty music? Well, we got some of that. Nice candles? We got that. A good sermon? I have no idea if you're going to get that. Some friends? Well, y'all get that. 
But isn't there a message deeper than that in this scripture that says we're supposed to not judge, we're supposed to be patient, that comes from the James passage, we're supposed to count on God, and it seems to me that what we ought to be looking for when we came to church is Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And I suspect that there's a lot of people out there, wherever there is, that don't have any idea they need to look for Him. I mean, I've got to tell you, I've got personal stories. I've met a guy out in the pumpkin patch. He said, my life's a mess. I live in my car. My wife's in prison, jail, one or the other. She beats me up or I beat her up. I get on my knees every night and pray God had not fixed it yet. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, you pray to God to fix it, He gives you a shovel or a hammer or tools. Sometimes you've got to make some effort on your own. We Christians are no different than those guys going over to AA. You know, in AA, you go there and you say, well, how am I going to change? And they say, well, change your play places, your playmates, and your play things. Hang out with different people. Go different places. Do different stuff. And so many of us hang out with the same people. You know, the danger of the world is that we let too much of the world get into who we are. We're supposed to be filled with Jesus going into the world uh, to be out of the world but in the world. To let people see what it looks like to have Jesus Christ as Savior. But it's way easier to go out there and just let the world convince you what you think, what you're going to say, and what you do. Those of us that have been to AA, we know there's always this little silent voice in your head that says, oh, you can drink enough beer. <laughs> but you don't have to be in AA for that little voice to tell you it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you help that person. It doesn't matter if, if, you, if you go to church this week. You, you know, you never know. You never know what a blessing you're going to be to somebody else because you're here. I mean, I could give you a really silly example, okay? This is Houston area, correct? We have a football team, I think. I heard their name is uh, Texas, right? Yes. And when they're playing better, most of y'all are pretty much Texas fans, right? Yes, yeah. not Dallas, but Texas. Yeah, well, at least Jim Gall and I like the Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> and when he's here, I know for sure I have a supporter. Somebody's got my back. <laughs> and he knows that about me. So, see, we have something, and, but you don't know who you are that for somebody else. And it's not about football or baseball. It's about eternal life. It's about what Jesus has to offer us because He's divine and we are the branches. branches. Come on. Branches. 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 This audio participation thing is not working out. I guess I'll have to script it up there like they do on TV. Said response. <laughs> Applause. Applause. Yeah. But if nothing else haunts me this week. And I mean that in a good way of haunting, not some ghost story. When I think about church, when I think about my community of faith, when I think about Jesus Christ, I'm going to keep asking myself that question, what am I looking for? Because if it's not Jesus Christ, I'm looking the wrong way. I feel for people right now, there's a lot of people that have been members of United Methodist Churches whose church left them. One of the stories they told was that we didn't believe Jesus was God. Uh, just, just so the people online can... Do y'all have any question about where I believe Jesus stands in our life today? Yeah. He's number one. Amen. Now, I don't always get him there. Because I'm human. I make mistakes. I fail. I think the wrong thoughts. And I have to start over and confess and move on. Amen. But I never quit believing. Amen. It's living into it that's hard. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now I believe there's hope 
I believe we have a great opportunity. We had a, 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 a district-wide United Methodist Worship Service yesterday at Clear Lake. I, I'm sad that I wasn't able to go. They were going to feed us and everything. But we had a great funeral here for a nice lady. Because our friend, y'all know Lily more than you know Brent, but Lily's daddy's mama died and we had a funeral here yesterday. About 50 people. People from all over Louisiana, from, from I don't know, Ponchatola or something. It's the other side of New Orleans, a long ways away. And so a lot of people stayed around and visited. And what a joy it was to see not only some of our church members helping, but to see people have fellowship and be in the house of God in a place where they were saved. Nobody was running them out. In fact, I, I told them, I said, the door's locked when you go out. I'm going home. Y'all stay long as you want. The blessing box. Being with hurting families. Believing that marriages and lives can be restored. That's the work of the church. And let me be clear. I don't care if it's Methodist or Baptist, Episcopal, Roman Catholic, or Greek Orthodox. If Jesus isn't leading it, it's not going the right way. Amen. And it's hard. It's hard to stay on that path, friends. And I need y'all to help me. But together, that's where we're going at Hope Community United Methodist Church. Okay? Okay, sir. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I'm going to do this before we sing today. Um, you know, the, this is a... As you may not have heard some of these words, you're going to hear them now. Uh, but we have some United Methodist deserts you now, uh, areas where a multitude of churches departed. And so I happened to be at a wedding the other day uh, with a person that y'all have seen a lot around here, uh, Christy Reno, right? The rich hand of Christy. Uh, she's Stephen Eason's daughter, uh, the, much the prettier part of that family. <laughs> and, uh, and, and Christy's married to Cody. They've been well acquainted with our church. I baptized both of the kiddos. Uh, they've been around very often, and, and uh, of course, all of the Lillian's uh, last years, they've been around too. Well, they, their church left, and so I've offered them a parking place for their membership until such time as another United Methodist Church is chartered. They're working on one. It'll happen. Uh, it's, it's being developed in that area around Tomball up there. Uh, yeah, and so, uh, uh, Kim talked to Christy. She knows about it. it it's happening. Raise your hand, Christy. Kim, raise your hand. Yeah, there, there, there. Kim lives up in that direction too. Uh, but until then, and and so they, I, you know, we were talking at the wedding, and Cody uh, said, "We we really don't have a church to go to Christmas Eve." And I said, "Well, I can hook you up." Uh, so we're glad that they're here. Uh, you may not also know that Cindy Martin and Al Martin have uh, returned to be a part of our church because their church disaffiliated. And so I'm telling them there's a lot of people out there like that. So Christy, the only thing I need to ask you on behalf of you and Cody and the rest of the people, as long as you're here, will you be loyal to this church with your prayers, presence, gift, service, and witness? And the answer is yes. Let's welcome the Reno family, although the only one we get to right now. Christy. And just in case Al and Cindy are watching, let's now welcome them. Okay, so I, I just this next song is good, and we're going to end the service with it, so I didn't want to interrupt the song with the talk, and so now we've got all that stuff. AJ's going to leave us as we close our worship service today. Uh, if, if there's anybody else that would you and I with the church, come forward now as we say, we're going to sing with Christian Friends for Christian Friends Thank you. 
What a joy it has been to be in worship with you today. We will be back here next weekend, and then on Christmas Eve at 5.30 and at 11. And then Christmas morning, like I said, wear your pajamas. It'll be okay. <laughs> Here's the benediction. God has blessed us with all that we have. Jesus shows us how to go forth and do it. But the Holy Spirit will give us the strength. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.